Hello, this is Rowan Shaw with Far From Standard Tutoring. You work for MTV. Your job is to keep the camera constantly on this rapper who's in this plane, the FFS rapper actually, and your job is to just keep changing the angle of the camera based on, uh, based on where the plane's going. The plane's going at a constant rate of 500 miles an hour, exactly two miles above the ground. Well, actually, before we go on with this problem, we have a very special guest here tonight. Please welcome the FFS rapper himself. Yo, that's Chisel. Wow, it's you. Oh my gosh, I was just telling a story about you. What? You're here in the studio. I was just wondering if you could, you know, give us a rhyme, drop some lines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really? Well, yeah. Alright. Related rates, no need to hate. With Rohan here, you gotta appreciate that numbers and graphs, they weigh a ton. But my, my man here makes calculus fun. Well, thank you very much, FFS rapper. Wow, good moonwalk. That's amazing. Well, anyway. Anyways, he taught me a thing or two back in the day. So, Back to this MTV problem that we have over here. We need to constantly monitor where he is. Now this type of problem, when the question actually is how fast is the how fast do you have to change the camera's angle from the ground to keep up with the plane, this is called a related rates question. So related rates, here at FFS we use a simple three-step process to solve related rates. The first question should be obvious. Uh, it, you, also, you always have to ask yourself, what do you have to find? Now this might be a little more complicated in related rates questions. Which variable do you have to solve for when the question is, how fast do you have to change your angle? Well, we know that our angle is theta, so whenever the question is how fast anything's changing, uh, then the variable, variable is actually the derivative of that. The derivative is d theta dt. So now actually this is what we want to solve for. Our eventual answer will be something that's uh, d theta dt equals, because that's how fast the angle is changing again. So now the second thing that we have to do is write out a true statement whose derivative has d theta dt. So really all we have to do is write out a statement that contains theta. Once we write out a statement that contains theta, we can take its derivative, and then we'll have a d theta, then we can just solve for it. So what statement should that be? Well, looking at this over here, we kind of see a triangle. So we can either say that the sine of this theta equals uh, two miles over the hypotenuse, but now should we use sine, cosine, or tangent? Well, as we can see, we're given something about this direction, so we know that it's either going to be tangent or sine, uh, but we are, we're also given something about this direction. We're not given how far it is. In fact, that keeps changing but we're given how fast it changes. So we're given something about this direction and something about this direction. So it's in our best interest to write about tangent. So we know that the tangent of theta is actually equal to 2 over, let's call this x. x is going to be how far the plane is uh, from, uh, from the camera, just horizontally. So now what we can do is just take the derivative and then we'll have something that's uh, d theta, uh, d theta dt in the equation. So taking the derivative of this, we know that uh, the derivative of tangent from a previous video is the secant squared of theta. And of course, using the chain rule times d theta dt, that's where that actually comes in. So we just took the derivative of the left. Now we can just take the derivative of the right. Now it's probably easier to think of this as 2x to the negative 1. So now the derivative is just negative 2 x to the negative 2 times dx dt, because that's the derivative of x. So now notice, whenever you have a variable, the derivative of that variable is d, that variable, over dt. So the derivative of x is dx dt. Now, to solve for d theta dt, which is what we want to do, that's what the question is asking us, how fast do you have to change the camera's angle, we're just going to divide by secant squared. So d theta dt is equal to negative 2x to the negative 2 times dx dt over secant squared of theta. Now, 
we're given that, uh, well, obviously the question actually is how fast is the angle changing when, uh, how fast do you have to change the angle when the angle is pi over 6 radians, that's around 30 degrees. So we know what theta is, so using that we can figure out what secant squared of theta is. We know what dx dt is, that's how fast x is changing, right? dx dt is how fast x is changing, and we know that it's changing by 500, uh, 500 miles an hour. So we know this, we know this, but how do we find x? What is x? What is this distance right now when the angle is pi over 6? Well, we can actually figure that out using the original equation. So that's one thing about related rates problems. A lot of times if you, you're going to get down to the answer, except you're going to not know one thing. So just know that you can go back up and you can sort of find that. So here, since we already know theta, pi over 6, we can use that to solve for x. So once we have our x, our dx dt, and our uh, secant squared of uh, pi over 6, that will give us the answer over here. Now let's look at another example. You are over here in the FMS tutoring building, and all of a sudden you, no you notice that there is a ladder, and the people from CTS tutoring, close to standard tutoring, our competitors, they're over here, they're trying to attack our building. So you push the ladder down, and now they're, they're falling, right? And so you notice somehow that the ladder over here, it's uh, going out in this direction at two feet per second, and it happens to be four feet uh, from, from this building right now, from the tip of the building, and the ladder is 10 feet tall. So now you ask yourself, how fast is the ladder falling vertically? What's its vertical speed? Well, it's tempting to think, well, they're always going to be the same, but that's actually not the case. Let's actually figure out what it'll be. So using this process, the first question we ask ourselves is, uh, what are we actually trying to find? Well, if we call x the distance from this point to this point, and y the distance from this point to this point. Obviously, as the ladder is falling, x and y will change. And so what we're actually trying to find is how fast y is changing, which is in fact dy dt, the derivative of y, with respect to time. So the question is, what is dy dt? Now what we can do is step number two, write out a true statement uh, who pretty much has y, because that way its derivative will have dy dt. So, uh, one of the most common statements in this case is actually the Pythagorean theorem. In this case, we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 10 squared, which is 100. Now we can use this simple truth to uh, find the derivative and hopefully solve for dy dt. So taking the derivative, this is 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt, again, keep in mind the chain rule, equals 0 because that's the derivative of uh, 100. So now to solve for dy dt, let's sort of just isolate it on one side. Let's subtract this and then divide by 2y. So we have dy dt equals negative 2x dx dt over 2y. And the 2's cancel. So now really, we have dy dt. It's uh, negative x times dx dt over y. We even know what dx dt is. It's given to us, 2, 2. 2 is what dx dt is, that's how fast that's changing. So uh, we even know what x is, x is 4. Now what is y? Hmm. Well, just like the other problem, we can just go back to the very beginning. Oh, well, given that we already know what x is, 4, we can use that to solve for y. And that's how you find dy dt in this case. Well, I hope related rates make sense to you now, and remember, calculus is fun.